Jackman. Uh, tonight, it's just me. Uh, I'm doing the proverbial Jason Derulo riding solo. Uh, and I'm going to play Final Fantasy VII on the PS4. The sixth best Final Fantasy of all the Final Fantasies. Way near my favourite. Uh, I don't hate it, I just don't love it as much as other people probably love it. Uh, but as it's the only Final Fantasy I have on PS4, it's the only one I'm going to play. Um, so basically, there'll there'll be no grinding. It'll just be a straight run, no pissing around, no fighting the same enemy for an hours on end. Uh, just front to back, hopefully without dying. Um, along the way, I'm probably going to talk about things I like about the game, things I hate about the game. Um, my personal experiences playing the game growing up, etc. Um, and also, I'll probably explain a few things that are happening along the way for people that have never played this game, which is no excuse. It's been out nearly 20 years. What are you doing? As far as intros to Final Fantasies go, this is probably the best, I'd say. It's probably my favourite in terms of just how epic it is. The, the music's incredible. It really is phenomenal music in this game. Ready? Wait for it. What a feeling. Boom! The bang! There we go. Fat guy does nothing. He's got bricks for hands. And this is the main hero. Alright, first of all, quickly. Potions. The biggest difference between um, this and the original PS1 version, uh, the circle was confirmed, X was cancelled, and this is the other way around, which when you first play the game is so confusing. So just like in real life, uh, a sword's more powerful than a gun. I mean, two, two guys with machine guns, not enough to take down one guy with a sword, just like real life. Uh, so off we go. So these are the apparent good guys. Uh, they form a military group called Avalanche. They're sort of trying to take power back to the people, basically, from the, uh, the people in charge. So this is our, our main character. He's not going to be proud. He's going to be Graham. Fucking Graham. <coughs> That's Biggs. He doesn't give a shit. He does not trust you whatsoever. Uh, so this is Barracks, or as he's now known. Now how to play. Off we go. Someone's just kind of milling around. We need to catch up.
Uh, also, just like in real life, that guy's punch was uh, more powerful than his machine gun. Doesn't make you wonder why he carries it in the first place. Follow Fatty. He's gone the wrong way. He's fucked it already. Alright, so, uh. A little bit of backstory, really. The first time I played this game, I was probably around nine. Uh, it's nearly 20 years ago. Amazing how old you feel playing this game. It hasn't aged very well. I mean, the original version is worse, purely for the bad translation. Um, certain parts missing. Um, it's, it's, de it's deceiving. To play the original Final Fantasy VII on PS1, you don't notice that much difference. Uh, but there, there are tons of story parts missing, to the point where if you laid out the story in the game, it, it makes no sense. Like I said, it's not my favourite. I've ranked all my all the Final Fantasy games I've played 1 to 15. This is probably my sixth favourite. Uh, quite low down compared to what the people say. Opinion and all that shit. So what's going on here? These these guys, Brick fans, Jesse, left, hired Graham uh, for the Avalanche team. And he's like, well, I'm just here for the money, I don't really care about your cause. Reach my hand, he's like, well, fuck that. He was a tell boy. My name isn't Susan. Follow Jesse down his unnecessary long stairs. Uh, yeah, so Susan's joining in the fun this time. Uh, he's got a gun for a harm, so. Getting on no plane for. Big jump. Don't know why I need to jump like that, so you can just sort of climb. Uh, so, he's stuck there. Uh, you have to come and collect it later on. So a few things on the screen that you probably, if you haven't played the game, you wondering what's going on. Uh, obviously HP. Health, so the bank MP, and all the magic shenanigans that we'll get up to later on. Uh, limit, when that's full uh, by taking damage, they'll get to unleash a ridiculously powerful attack. It varies from person to person. Uh, yes, I know. Uh, it's, it's turn based as well, um, so the far right bar, when that fills up, you get to have your go. Um, and what I did to start with in the menu, in, I set that to active, so no matter what, the, the battles just flow, there's no stoppages. When I'm in a menu, or when I'm having my go, it just flows. That's sort of like Final Fantasy VI, any minute back there. Oh, 
we're just coming up to the first boss. Pinnacle of all RPG gaming. First boss. Bring that up. Alright, let's go to the steering wheel. So the plan was um, these guys are trying to blow up each of these reactors one at a time. Um, these reactors, what they're doing, they're pumping energy. Well, they're taking energy from the planet and filtering it towards sort of, the higher conglomerates of the world. Um, and it's, it's milking the planet dry, and these guys have a like, no, enough's enough. You can fuck off. So they're trying to blow up the, the entire reactor base. There's eight reactors, this is the first one. And apparently they're not too happy about it, so they send um, pride and joy of the military, this fuck off scorpion. Uh, piece of piss, really. Mechanical, um, so its weakness is lightning. I call mechanical energy in Final Fantasy VII. So I'm just gonna fuck him up with Cloud for a bit. Or Graham, should I say? A new one. Oh, just in case that sounds a critical, that's all. Uh, this guy has a move uh, around halfway through the battle where he, he turns around and. Well, it's now, I think. So if I attacked him now with his tail up, <laughs> he, uh, he'd, he'd rip me a new one with his laser attack. So I'm just going to lead him to it for a bit. Down, so. right, carry on. for Susan there. Uh, yeah, so obviously I've set the bomb to blow up the reactor. Don't want to be sticking around too much, to be honest. Off we go. So just going back the way we came, can't go through there for some reason. Of we go. Oh, Jessie's stuck. And we kind of need her to get out. I'm not going to be doing any grinding in this playthrough whatsoever. I'm not going to stop and level up or any, anything like that. I'm just going to, there'll be parts where if there's an item I need, I'll, I'll wait until I find a particular enemy that got it, steal it, or um, there are certain times when I'll need to stop and look for optional characters. Uh, and 
basis. It depends on luck, really. Let's uh, put these guys up. Actually, a ghost. So, yeah. Fancy, really. uh, this time as well, it's, it's pretty serious. If I let that go down to zero, then it's game over. Uh, which shouldn't happen. It's just a moment. Have an absolute mare for this level to do. Uh, so it's basically like the start of the game, I need these two guys to open their respective doors, really. Only one of them knows the code for each door. Which is annoying. They just get their heads together and say, hey, let's learn all the codes together. So there's six minutes left, but from that it's gonna blow up now. Yeah, it's reactor one down. Not content with one explosion to blow something else up. Um, doing it while they're in there as well, which is uh, always a good tactic. He wants his money. Susan's like, no, you can wait, pal. So we're back to the street that was shown in the intro. Um, that girl there, she's a playable character later on. Uh, so I'm just going to buy her shit. She sells flowers, so I'm just going to buy one. I might give it to Susan later. Thank you. Off we go. As I mentioned, this game's got such a good soundtrack. It really is just brilliant. Yeah, let's pick everything up. I'm missing something. Right. I mean, shout out to uh, Nobu Uematsu, the composer of this game. It's ridiculously good. Let's go half. Easy peasy. Japanesey. The first few hours of this run. There's not going to be that much difference, really. There's going to be a lot of running around the same areas, fighting the same guys, the same boss along the way to the story, picking up the characters, etc. Uh, but it really is, it's, it's just set in the same city for a while. I'm 
a good run, you'd probably get out of, of the first city in about two or three hours. Um, and since I'm not going to be grinding or do any old side quests or running around or anything, I'm just going to get straight out. Shouldn't take too long. It's all about keeping it interesting, boys and girls. Right. Great, get shot to fuck there. In terms of tactics as well, I'm, there's not much else I can do other than just put these guys up. Uh, as I collect more characters along the way, they'll have different abilities. Um, some are better magic users, users some are better um, thieves, etc. So, For the most part, this, the initial part of this run is just using the same attacks over and over again. It's just standard RPG really. So just like in real life as well, you can just jump on top of um, speeding trains and be fine. I mean, you know, why wouldn't you do it? So these fuckers never really waited for me, to be honest. Um, what was it, a minute? Left without me. Seems as angry as fuck. Mm. Let me in. Here we go. Hey, how's it going, guys? Graham. You're the man, Graham. Fucking Susan's livid. You don't need no man. Never wants a part. There we go. Here's a kiss, Graham, handsome chap. Uh, yeah, just like your mum would. With the old face there. Uh, another interesting part of this PS4 remake, uh, the original games, you can just, just look at him, he's a mess, just blocks for hands, um, he has a mouth though, um, which I think the, PS, the PC version when that came out, they, they had mouths, uh, just the main characters, because uh, otherwise it's just a fucking, it's two eyes on a big round face, it's not what you need. And as you can see, all the characters, well, the people in this game haven't got a mouth. Or fingers. Or nose. This guy's having a stroke. No, he's fine. He's fine. He's not fine. Okay. Yep. Alright, alright. Jesse, I'm going to... Here we go, HDTV. Look at that. So yeah, the, this city is called Midgar. Uh, it's, it's the biggest city in the world. It's, it's owned by a, a company called Shinra. We operate the reactors to draw life from the planet and give power to the city, blah blah blah. Um, and this map basically shows the outer ring, which is the reactors and where the people live uh, in the, the tower in the middle of the Shinra building. This is where the president and all his families live.
time to get off the train pretty soon. For those with a good memory as well, uh, these two guys, Biggers and Wedge, you may notice them from uh, a character named from Star Wars. In the old, uh, original trilogy, this character called Biggs and Wedge. Uh, Biggs and Wedge actually turn up in a lot of games, a lot of Final Fantasy games. Uh, they're just a massive crush on Star Wars making these. I have to put them in every game. big. Off we go. So that we're going to pick up the next character in our party. Uh, nice bit of skirt to look at. If you're into that kind of thing. Way to handle any situations, run into a pub, just, just open fire. 1997, long as a fuck. Out of my way, Susan. Come on then. In we go. Here she comes. So this is Tifa, or Tifa. Uh, Cloud, or Graham's childhood friend. Um, so she's going to be... Give this okay, right. For those that play this game and know it pretty well, uh, there's a date scene um, around. I think it's near the end of disc one, and uh, <laughs> based on the course of certain actions that you take in the game, you can choose which of the three female characters you're going to date with. But if you play it right. You and Susan could go on the, the best date of your life. So all, all three female characters plus Susan have like a base sort of affection meter for the main character. And you can do actions in the game that sort of lower and raise the levels of each character. And if you do it right and do it's, it's very specific actions, you can go on a date with Susan. And it is beautiful. It is a beautiful moment. Dark Cross Lovers. So that's how we get around, we just jump around there. Just talk to old, uh, old shit wife over here. Uh, I don't really feel like drinking. So you can just shut up. Right, downstairs. Business. There's uh, 
Jesse on the old Apple Mac over there in the corner. That's, that's part of the plot you might have missed at the start. The main character, Graham, uh, used to actually fight for the, the main uh, bad guy, military, uh, a team called Soldier. And uh, he apparently left. And uh, it's, it's not... It will explain why later on, but it's not really clear why he left to start with. Susan, the ship wife, they're planning another attack on another reactor, and they need Graham to give him a hand. And he's like, well, no, I'm doing you a favour. I just want the money, I want to come home. See you later. Ship wife's having none of it, though. She's like, you can fucking sit down, son. We need you, guy. We need you badly. It's a bit of uh, plot-driven exposition bullshit. Now, these guys were childhood friends. They grew up in the same town. Until Graham went off and joined the military. Uh, this is the first time we see each other, I think, in I don't know, five years. I think it is. Flippers. All oh, the boys are leaving town. Big bad Sephiroth. The main bad guy. I don't really care about spoilers at this point. You've you, you had 20 years to play this game. Huh? Yep, that's how it works. Kill a few people, get on the news. National hero. This is uh, shit wife being a bit selfish here. She's like, I know you're going off to save the world, but come and save me at some point. And Graham's like, all right, whatever. If I must. Nope. I did try and fix the translation in this game, um, it, it did need fixing, some of it was just pretty terrible in the original games. Um, it still doesn't make much sense if you lay out the whole story, but they did try and fix the grammar and the, the terrible spelling mistakes in the original games. I mean, no disrespect, back then it was just, it was a core team of Japanese developers and uh, to translate a game of that size. So, fair play to him. I can do it. 
It's, it's better now. They have an English department in, in, in all sort of uh, RPG developers now, so... Alright, so this is part of um, getting Susan to fall in love with you. You've got to teach him shit. And also for you as well, if you've not played the game, this is a pretty important function. The materia is the unit of magic in this game. Um, each materia holds a specific spell or summon magic or um, like boost, like it can boost stats, that kind of thing. Um, and you can equip a different materia on each each character basically, depending on what item they've got equipped. Should show you. So, Cloud Sword can hold two material, two slots. So there we go. Um, the initial spell of this material is Cure. As you level up each material, collecting ability points or AP, uh, you can unlock new magic, etc., etc. Game Graham, this is life. Alright, so we're off to uh, shit watch joining us this time. Punch him at Johnson. So, on we go. There's a few things we can do in this uh, town before we fuck off. Uh, a few items to pick up. A couple of shops. I believe this is the item shop. Just gonna get a couple of bits. game are so important, so useful for the initial run. Uh, I'm, only gonna, I'm not going to get any now, you can buy them later on, a little bit more money. Um, they are just so useful in the early game. So we're just about to head off upstairs. Back 
milk train. Captain Strokey there. He's having none of it. I'm seeing him. Dude is like, you up? Knock me out, pal. Susan, calm your tits, woman. Susan. Currently, I'm pretty sure T4 Shitwife has the highest affection for you throughout the game. So, basically, what you've got to do, as well as getting Susan to fall in love with you, you've got to get Shitwife to hate you. So, there are certain things you can do to piss her off in the game. Uh, like from the start, where you could have given them the flower and you chose instead to give it to Marlene, which is Susan's daughter. And Susan's like, yeah, that Graham. Top chap. A bit of, a bit of a fracas occurring here. They caught on. Uh, there's a bunch of terrorists on board, which is you guys. Fake RDs. Uh, they having none of it. So it's time to get out of here. Pretty simple. Run down the train. Jesse, just like a man. Oh, cheers, dude. Yeah, all right. One. We're off to So in, in keeping with the realistic nature of this game, you just you just jumped out of a train uh, that was going for usual train speeds, I imagine, and you're fine, absolutely fine. You, you can there's so much you can take in this game. You can be shot at, you can set yourself on fire, uh, blown up, chopped in half. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Should just have time to fight the next boss of this playthrough. Okay. So shit wife, uh, she basically knocks enemies out. She tries to. Didn't want 
that. Okay. Says you can't have fun in a dystopian RPG where everyone's dying. He'll slip and slide. So it's the same layout as the first reactor. Kind of helps. There's a couple of these guys to take out. Shouldn't be a problem. Slowly, slowly. These things there, they're save points, in case you wonder what they are. I've seen a couple on the way already. I will be saving it probably at the end of each playthrough, it's just as a precaution. I don't plan on dying, uh, but you, you never know. There's, there's always occasions where something could go wrong, but well, there's, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in this game. I mean, enemies are quite forgiving at the start of the game, but as we go on, I mean, I'm not going to be doing any uh, grinding for the purpose of leveling up. So there probably will be times when I'll be a little bit low leveled than I'd prefer, to be honest. So nap, ship wife. Hmm. You heard. Terrible wife. Ah. 
attack the old bomb there. Let's get to it. It's time to get out of here. Talking to you guys, distracting me. Making us running out. These terribly, terribly long stairs. Limit breaks in this game are priority moves, so whereas you do take in turns, uh, if you do a limit break, it will go first. It will be the next move. Die in the second boss. There we go. Through the door. So there's the first mini game of sorts of, of the game. Uh, the aim is to press all three of these buttons at the same time. Uh, there's no audible cue, so you've just basically got to wing it. Not like that. There we go. Third time lucky, I'll take it. 
So, in fact, I'm going to bring this playthrough to an end for the time being. And, uh, I'll join you next time. Yeah, just stopping by. See you later.